I'm not going to start for two and a half minutes, but you guys can start coming back. So I'll mute these guys. All right, put that up there. And back to there. All right, good. So since I got a minute, uh, the voting machine link is here if you care about that. Yeah, this is it right here, DEF CON 25 voting machine village report. This is the PDF they prepared as a result of the DEF CON voting machine village. And they explain, uh, it's a very nice report, like 25 pages, they explain all the machines they had and how they hacked them. Every machine was compromised over the course of DEF CON. So they, and most of them are still in use. So they explain, uh, you know, how they got in and what vulnerabilities they had. And a lot of them are just appalling, like hard-coded default passwords, uh, where you don't even have to be doing anything even remotely difficult to get in. All right. Well, I think we're close enough. We are indeed close enough. Let's carry on here. Okay, so NetBIOS, I talked about, this is the uh, system used to communicate over local area network for sharing files and printers. Um, so every machine, every device, every printer has a NetBIOS name, which can be up to 16 characters long. The last character determines the type of device it is. So you have a computer name, you can have a thing called the master browser, which is just used to keep an index of all the local devices and other things, computer names on your network. Uh, for some ungodly reason, Microsoft invented this thing called a null session, where you log in with an empty username and an empty password and now you get privileges you didn't used to have. I've never had anybody make, explain how this ever made any sense to anybody. But that's the way Microsoft designed their stuff and it stayed that way until around Windows Vista when they finally knocked it off. Um, it was, for machines earlier than Vista, this was a, the main way to enumerate them. All you had to do is log in with an empty username, an empty password, and then you get a list of all the users. It would tell you who the administrator was, if the name had been changed, it would tell you all the shares. It would tell you the password change policies, all kinds of useful information that is none of your business from having a password a blank and a username a blank. It was really strange, and Microsoft persisted in this madness for about 10 years. So there are a bunch of tools out there. We'll do it, MBT stat. We'll show you that Google Net View will uh, connect to a server and show you the shared resources. Um, and net use is what you use in the command line to connect to a shared folder and then download or upload files. Uh, there are enumeration tools. So those are what you use on Windows. There are Windows command line tools to connect to things. And of course, in the GUI, you can just open the Windows Explorer and then go to like network neighborhood. These days they call it network or my network places on different versions of Windows and just explore the shared resources of your LAN. Uh, Linux, in Kali, you can run SMB4K or Enum for Linux, which are Linux tools to enumerate Windows shares. And then there's uh, tools here that are have the ability to do it in a graphical way. So this is what Enum for Linux looks like. You run it with an IP address, and it then connects and tells you the same information you would have got from Windows machine, uh, the name of the share, the IP address, the files that are being shared, and so on. A dump sec is an enumeration tool that lets you find all the information about things that are shared. Yeah? So when you use dump sec, is it like a database? Uh, it is, but the data is just, it's not a real database. It's just a list of shares and user accounts. 
it's enumeration. It's not a data dump in the sense that like a SQL injection would be. Right. Yeah. And then hyena is just another graphic thing uh, that will try to enumerate things off a service. And I don't think it's free, so it gives you a graphical environment. And you'll see it on the global groups and domain users and down here it's got the shared folders and such. It just scans your network for you and tells you what all things are available. These are various tools to make it more and more convenient to do the enumeration stage of a pen test. And then there's Nessus. Nessus is the most popular vulnerability scanner in the world. I think I use it in this class. I know I use it in the next class. Um, it's got a free and a pay version. And uh, it can do everything. And thought I, I looked at it today to see what they've done. And they've added so cloud support to it. So now you can scan your cloud machines and your virtual machines on every kind of surface. And they've added compliance reports for HIPAA and everything. So you know, it's in constant development. It's a very popular product. And it can do a very thorough scan taking hours to give you a long list of all the security problems on your server, all the ones it can find. All bone scanners are pretty ineffective and weak. They miss bones and they lie and tell you bones are there. So they're not perfect by any means like antivirus, but they are an important part of the process. You always do a bone scan in addition to manual testing because the bone scan will really test every link and every folder and every file and every account, which your manual testing probably won't. So it's, it's a good tool to use, but you have to be aware that you can't really trust what it says too much. OpenVAS is the fully free version of Nessus because Nessus uh, several years ago went commercial and the open source community didn't like that, of course, so they made the fork, which is 100% free, which is open vast. But most people just use Nessus because they have pretty nice uh, trial versions and limited free versions available. Um, and that's good enough for most people. So if you want to enumerate Unix, Unix doesn't have a lot of this craziness of Windows. It doesn't have SMB file shares usually, unless you're mixing Unix and Windows servers in the same network. It doesn't have null sessions. That was only Microsoft that did that. So a Unix is a whole different beast to enumerate. Now there are many different versions of Unix, HP Unix, uh, Apple Mac OS is Unix, um, there's Ubuntu Linux. Uh, there's a difference between Unix and Linux but the only person on earth that cares is uh, the guy at, at MIT, the mad mom guy for Stallman. Richard Stallman cares. None of the rest of us care. The, technically, there is some internal difference, but the commands are the same. The layout is the same. All the rest of us don't really care, and they call it just Starnix. It's Unix or Linux. It's all pretty much the same for all practical purposes. But if you get deeply into operating system design, one of them has GNU in Linux, and the other one doesn't or something. And he wrote GNU. So to him, this is super important. But anyway. Um, so uh, one thing you might do to enumerate new systems is SNMP. SNMP is a protocol used to control network devices. You can control routers, firewalls, switches. Unfortunately, the most popular version of it is version two that sends community strings, otherwise known as passwords, in plain text over the network. So it's fantastically unsafe, but it's what everybody uses because everybody has old stuff on the network that doesn't speak SNMP version three. So until you're really ready to replace all your old junk, you can't go to SNMP version three. When you do, SNMP version three has encryption for the passwords, which is a whole lot better. But anyway, a lot of people are using it and you can control servers through it. And um, it's the sort of thing you should not be letting off your land. It should only be used to manage things on your land. Um, so you can enumerate SNMP with SNMP walk, which is in Kali, and it will then find all these services, and the services have these long numerical names. It looks sort of like IP addresses, but they're, and they have various objects here, and this thing can go on for dozens of pages. It's a database of facts about network services, and you can send queries, and it can send information back. So you can ask the firewall, give me a list of the latest things you've blocked, and add another rule for this and tell me how busy the switches are and all that jazz. So you can control things. It's used by network monitor systems that show you a nice graphical environment. It's using SNMP to gather all that data. But I say typically it is fantastically insecure. In addition to sending passwords unencrypted, most people just leave the private string set to private and the public string set to public and never change it. So they typically just has a default password because people think nobody's going to be on their LAN and be a bad guy. And that's a risky assumption, but that's the way a lot of people operate. I would think that's probably declining now. Ever since the Snowden documents came out, a bunch of people got much, much more worried about trusting their LAN 
and they're starting to encrypt traffic on their land more. So maybe the SNMP version two is finally beginning to go down. All right, so if you want to know if somebody else is using a Unix server, you can use Finger. This has been long before the internet. Unix users had email, chat, instant messaging, and social profiles. They did it with Finger. You would have the people that were all using the same server could talk to each other, and they were often people in the same company or something, and you didn't need any stinking internet. So you use these tools. So Finger will let you connect, uh, get someone's user profile, and see if they're online right now, and when they last read their email, and things like that. Um, Nessus, of course, runs against Unix. It's an all-purpose tool. It runs on any operating system, and it can scan any operating system. It's the most famous one. They're very serious about giving it tons of new features all the time. That's why everybody loves it. So that's what Finger does. You're on Finger, and it'll tell you everybody that's logged in and how long they've been logged in. And if you give Finger username, it'll tell you that person's user profile. Most people don't bother to set them up anymore, but your hardcore, old-fashioned Unix guys with the beards will set it up. Um, Anyway, so you can scan Linux with Nessus to find vulnerabilities, just like you can scan anything else, and you'll get a list of vulnerabilities, and here it is finding a bunch of critical vulnerabilities in a Linux machine that's all full of old stuff. And in the next class, 124, we've got a special Windows machine all full of horrible stuff, so there's plenty of vulnerabilities to find and exploit. Uh, all right, so I got a few more cahoots. And they should be in one of my windows here. Here, Cahoots. There we are. All right, good. Sounds like there's a little sound and everything. And the share is still running. Looks like we're in good shape. 721065. <laughs> These are pretty good names. All right, I guess so. Uh, she'll come in. All right, I'll wait a bit. All right, I'm going to count 10 seconds. We'll see if anybody more comes. Okay, guess that's it. So, five questions. Which is the system that uses a 16-character name for every device? Yeah, that's NetBIOS. All right, which is the Kali tool that tells you about Windows shares? <laughs> okay, enum for Linux. SNMP walk is a Kali tool, but it doesn't do Windows shares. SNMP is a different thing. All right. So what's the popular Vuln scanner? Nessus, good. All right, which one of these is not Unix or Linux? There are a few companies making operating systems that are not Windows and not Unix, which is a very questionable business decision. If my product team told me we have to make our own OS I would strongly be inclined to fire them, say, dude, 
Why in the world would we want to make our own OS? Just what is it you can't use either Windows or Linux for? Because it's going to be so much wasted time and money developing your own OS. But Cisco makes their own piece of junk called iOS with a capital I. And there's other ones like Green Hill and VxWorks. These guys have to maintain their own OS. And boy, I don't know why they don't just use Linux or something. Anyway, so that's MS-DOS was the thing that eventually turned into Windows. And those are the two main OSs, of course, Windows and Linux. And if you're using something else, there's probably something wrong with you. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So which command gives you information about one Linux user? All right, at Finger, Finger can tell you about everybody, but if you put a name in, it tells you about just one person. All right, so E gets six points, but I don't know who they are. Chan, there may be more than one Chan. And YJZ, I kind of doubt that's a real name. Anyway, so Blunder and Mustafa, I know who they are. And uh, these other folks will have to tell me who they are, like Chan. Perhaps that's what this chat is. Eric Burns is E, good, okay, I got it. All right, thank you. And I, oh, that's pretty good, okay. Yan, G, Zhang, I got you, and there's a, okay. Chan Saley, good, good. That's the way to do it, this way I get it recorded right away, so I think I know everybody. Good, thank you. I'm gonna turn it off, have a good night, folks. And I'll, of course, go to the lab and help anybody that wants help here.